shape you to your core. Well, that was the introduction to the series, Shake You to Your Core. I'm sure you're quite shaken at this moment. Let us continue on. Here we have David Ike speaking with Basma Zulu Baba Kredu Mutwa. And Mr. Ike is about to ask a very poignant and this question is very, it, it, it involves basically the nexus and the totality of the knowledge, the answer uh, to this question. So it is it is a very well crafted, uh, intended inquiry. And we shall listen to the question and the answer given by Mr. Vasamas Zulu Baba Kredu Mutwa. So let's start looking at the core that is a common thing to all this present day in manipulating the highly malevolent, highly destructive situation. Um, my own research is, uh, around the world is certainly focusing on the fact that there is a force not of this world, shall we say, that is the common theme. What is your experience and your knowledge of an extraterrestrial involvement in the history of that? One of the most secret stories that was revealed to me is about this being. This story was revealed to me first in Manoltine, then in the country today called Rwanda, once known as Rwanda. Then I learned about this story at that time on the foothill of Mount Kilimanjaro. This is the story, the story you find throughout Africa. There was one at time when the blue sky was in business, when the whole earth was covered with me. When you could not see the sun as it is now, you only saw it as a, a, a flash of white light moving slowly upward. At that time, there was an eternal wisdom. Every day of the year. At that time, People could not see the star. People only saw the trees growing. Trees which were very, very big. There was no desert. Only down everywhere. At that time, people were what we call in Zulu, no movie. A human being was both male and female in one place. And out of the sun, one day came terrible forces. They were like gigantic bones made of two living bones. They were shaped like bones without and they were bigger than the people. They came out of the sky bringing great noise, black smoke, and fire with them. And out of those two objects came them. At that time, human beings did not speak. We had no use of language at that. And 
Hebrew chapter 11, read Matthew 11. Amen. We with the feet. And this is the power of his mind. That's why he called out an animal which he wanted to hunt and kill for his brother. And the animal would appear and kneel down before them. And the man killed the animal and killed him. But when the Peter did it, they told our people that they were born. And thus they were going to baptize and to raise him on one condition. He had to worship them and accept them as our king. Some told our people that they were our elder brothers and that this end had produced them generations. And they said they had come back to the green womb of their mother and that they were going to make it. What they did, they created a very strange pair of caves in the land. They dug two caves. In one cave was a green loud, in another cave was a red and they drove human beings into this cave. And each human being had to choose which cave the human being wanted to go to. And those who went into the green cave came out as to be there. And those who went to the red cave came out as men. And then the proper that Solomon told our people that now they were happy. But the moment the first men saw the first women, a terrible vow erupted. The women hated the men because they looked between their legs and they saw what they thought the snake dancing in the face of the men. And the men hated the women because they looked on their chest and they saw this big thing, what they wear, they could know. And then the Chitahuri laughed. It was to them a very, very big joke. And then the Chitahuri said, if you serve us to worship the human being, we are going to make you in sport. And the human beings are free. And the Kitauri gave human beings a second thing, the gift of life. So, if you serve us, you wretched little human beings, we will make you gods. So that is Credo Mutois. And take a moment, I'm sure you're shaken to the core at this point, but that is the story of the Chitaurui, the Anunnaki, essentially, and how they basically genetically tampered, modified the human uh, form at that time so they could work in their gold gold mines there. And that was uh, essentially the story of how, you know, male, female were embodied in one form at that point in time when the Anunnaki came and then they split into male and female form. So that um, ties in with the next flow, topic flow here. And let's see, involving the Anunnaki and the origins of mankind, at least one story and how that 
took place. So this is another book. Uh, I don't know if, if Mr. Hector had uh, anything. This is under his, uh, I don't know if this is a, one of his alternate identities, but this is uh, the great gay discovery for humanity, not the psychological gay question, but the origin gay question is settled in this interesting report from the Mononaki Order of Heaven of South Dakota. You are invited to explore the old question of human hermaphroditism, hermaphroditism, not the local current biological sexual, bisexual condition, but the ancient origins of straight, gay, and lesbian trends, along with discovering interesting rainbow roots, the planetary past for Earth as a moon, not as a planet, emerges that begs further study simply because the distinctive characterization in precise terms of gayness is in the story of the first true moon Earth humans. They appear to have been hermaphrodite. We we're talking about ancient moon Earth. Well, it is this Earth, but when she was moon in orbit around super planet Nibiru. Are you surprised? So stay tuned, folks. We're going to um, be getting into this uh, question of the origins of uh, mankind, uh, the genders existing within one human form, and sort of trace its origins uh, from that from the Anunnaki tampering with the bio, uh, biological uh, human at that point and see where it leads us, where we're at today with this sort of transgender agenda that seems to be, um, you know, poking its face in every facet uh, of our culture, of our, you know, every aspect of uh, identity uh, where, you know, in, involving like, you know, how much government uh, has to say about things, uh, including the popular media or, you know, in our culture with like Disney and a lot of these Hollywood agendas and, and such. So we're going to kind of uh, get in, delve into that uh, based with the, the focal point being that book, The Great Gay. So if you want to be gay, hit that subscribe button, folks, and we'll uh, we'll get through this question and we're, we're going to uh, shake you to your core.